give up the ghost. You know what happened in his cry? Listen to me. He said there in John 10 that his sheep know his voice and a stranger they'll not follow. The Bible said, Gary, there was an earthquake come across the land and said that those that slept in the graves and had been there for years came forth and said they were seen in the towns and villages talking to folks. Why? Because the cry of God Almighty's Son, Jesus Christ, Listen to me. You remember one time that he had gotten, the Bible said they wasn't on the sea, but they was on a lake. And the Bible said that he went into a ship or a boat with his disciples there, Buck, and said that he went in a certain part of the boat and he fell asleep and said that when his disciples got in distress and they got worried because the storm had rose, they woke him up and Gary, he said he rebuked Listen, the wind and the sea, and there was peace. Boy, I'll tell you what, why the water even knew his voice? How did he know that, Gary? Because he was there. The Bible said in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes, sir, Gary, the waters knew the sound of his voice from the very beginning, and they ceased. Gary, do you remember when Legion, listen, when the man was there and he was possessed with the devil, you said, preach, you was going to give an invitation. Yeah. I am, if you'll listen, yes, sir. He said that when Legion was there, that, that he spoke to him and said, but the devils even knew him and said, oh, listen, leave us alone, yes, sir. But there was something about his name, Gary. Listen, as he stood before Lazarus, the tomb of Lazarus, that he spoke to Lazarus. Guess what happened? Lazarus come forth because of his voice. It was like no other. There's power in it. That's the same way with us tonight. You're here tonight. You're lost without the Lord. You need to be saved. You say, preacher, how in the world can I do it? You'll do it just the same way we all did it. You'll listen to his voice. He won't ask too much of us, Gary. My goodness gracious. He ain't asking too much of us, and he don't require a whole lot of us. Anybody else, Gary, if I go down there and, and, and uh, buy me a new car, a new house, all the loans I've got in the world, listen, I, I, we was counting and laughing the other day, and some of you will think this foolish, and it is. Uh, me and Jenna was adding up, and we was talking about automobiles, and, and uh, I said, Jenna, you keep track, and she said, how many of uh, automobiles have you had? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, you help me out here and we'll figure up. And the best I could recollect, I've had 35 automobiles in my life. And just You say, that's a crazy. It is crazy. It sure is. Listen, Buck, and there wasn't very many of them that I paid cash for. I had to float along for them. Boy, I probably got a record of car loans. Uh, back in the bank records and, and Gary and all like that. Listen, I went down there and they wasn't the one of them. Listen, would say, okay, you just take it. You're a pretty good fella. No, sir. They said, sign on the bottom line. I'll loan you the money. Why are you going to loan me the money? That's real nice of you. Yeah, but you ain't read the fine print. We're going to charge you interest. You're going to pay back about double a month. You borrowed, yes, sir. He went and bought our house and, 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 and bought us a mobile home years ago when we was first married. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know how in the world it's going to pay for. You know how much that thing cost? $12,000 not for a brand new mobile home. Why, well, you couldn't even buy axles out from one of them uh, these days. But, Gary, I think after I got home, boy, I was worried to death. How in the world was I going to pay all that? Uh, Gary, I'm praying and even got more scared. Yes, sir. I think I owed him about fifty thousand dollars. So I worked hard and paid it off a little bit early. But Buck, it required something. What does the Lord want from us? He just wants us. The Bible said to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. You mean that's all He wants? Don't that make you feel important tonight? He just wanted me back. That's all He wanted. I couldn't get over it, Gary. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd have to do all these mighty things. Mm -hmm. I didn't think nothing of myself and thought myself was a ruined mess. And that's exactly what I had. Uh -huh. And I began to hear his voice. I said, now, Lord, what do you want of me? 
Need some money? No, I don't need no money. No, sir. Want me to be some great big superman? No, sir. Well, what are you wanting? I just want you. Is that right, church? Everybody's been saved here tonight. Right. Is that the way you done you? You just want me? You just want a mess? Yes, sir. I just want you. That's all I want. I begin to ponder, Buck. I begin to read the scripture. You know what I found out? That he owned me to begin with. He created me in his likeness and his image, and I belong to him. He purchased me, Gary, with his blood. He owned me. You know what, Buck? I found out that he had the ability and the power to make me serve him. But he didn't. I found out, Buck, that he wanted me on the condition was that I'd come to him and claim him with my heart and with my mind. I read in his word that with the heart man believeth and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Gary, I couldn't believe it that he was just wanting me to come and say, Lord, I'm sorry and I want you as my Lord and Savior. It was very simple, but no contracts to sign. And all he wanted me to all he wanted me to say was, I'll do my best to serve you. So Gary, I got down. The first time I called on his name, I never I was a young boy. And like some others has testified tonight, a lot of preachers don't teach it, preach it, and a lot of teachers don't teach it. Boys, they're preaching and teaching, but you will not hear it as long as I'm pastor of this church. And I believe, Ronnie, as long as you're trustee and these good deacons as we got, boys, don't ever fall to it. A lot of them said, boy, you, you believe and it don't matter what kind of shape you're in. Boy, I'll tell you what, the Bible says if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? They're teaching a lot of folks, as I said the other night, a lot of folks have said it don't matter what you do or what you've done, and you're all right. Boy, I'll tell you what, folks, is going to be surprised one day. The Bible said as a tree falls, so shall it lie. If we, if I, if we fall, Gary, if this fleshly body falls and we die in sin, we're going to be rose in sin. A lot of folks don't believe that, and I don't care. I'm just responsible, Gary, because I'm the pastor here. We've got churches that's rocking people to sleep and telling them everything's all right. Then they wonder how come they ain't got no power and they ain't got no fire and they ain't got they dwelling in them. Lord, I tell you what, we need the word of God and we need the truth. I've had a man to tell me one time, and I was talking about the other night. Uh, there's just after a while, God will wrestle with you and he'll turn you over to reprobate mind. Right. Reprobate yeah. mind, what's that mean, preacher? That's scary. Yeah. You don't know the difference between good and evil, amen? Right. Right. You don't know what's right and what's wrong. You just think everything's hunky dory right. floating out there, Gary, and yeah. la la right. But there's going to be rows in destruction. Right. Yeah. I come to him, listen. I come to him and I knelt. <laughs> I said, Lord, I need you with all of my heart. I right. need you. Buck, I didn't even have the nerve to make it to the altar. First time I told him, I told this a hundred times, and I hope God, Gary, gives me the desire to tell it a That's thousand right. times. Yep. Got down between that seat, and they didn't nobody else know what was going on. That wasn't none of their business. That was between me and God. That's right. Tears right. began to flow down my cheek, Buck, and I got down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I began to cry out. Buck, I hadn't robbed no banks. I hadn't killed nobody. I, I probably told several lies and lied to my parents and and and, and done all that, but I, I wasn't that bad of a boy, wasn't that old to be that bad. But guess what? I was lost. Yeah, I was same. lost and yeah. I need to be saved. Yeah, I might as well rob banks, I might as well kill people and all like that. Why? Because a lot of folks think that there's there's a difference. Boy, the meaning of the main sin of sin. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, Yes, sir, if you're not saved, it don't matter. It don't matter. God don't look at that. He looks for the blood. Amen. Oh, yes. I got down on my knees, Gary. Didn't know how to pray, but I said, Lord, something's wrong inside, and I need it fixed. I had peace one time, Gary, before I reached the age of accountability. Yes, sir, I had peace then, but the peace had left me. 
But it, well, I didn't know peace like I knew after I got saved. 